deep. Full gas. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that was f***ing awesome. Here and there, it is really coming unglued. Hey EVC here, so we are talking about and breaking down the most dynamic and fun and interesting races I have ever done. This is road bikes meets crits meets cyclocross meets supercross. It's just the best thing I've ever done. And so we're going to break it down. So the format, course, racers. So how does this thing even work? Now the format is a two moto format, 20 minutes plus one lap each moto. A moto is a race. Your lowest combined score wins and moto two breaks a tie. So here's a scenario. You get third and first. Good job, you're great. You get four points. You get a first and a fifth. Well, that's six points. If you get a second and a second, that's four points. So now you're tied with the guy uh, you know, that did 3-1, but he got a first in that second moto, so he wins, okay? The course now. The course is a very tight, really well-paved course, uh, very tight turns, big curbs, it's like a super moto track. Now, there is about 20% of it that's hard-packed dirt with two jumps, jumps, two berms, berms, what? This thing's awesome. So let's talk about the racers to watch out for. So number one is Phil Tisman. This guy's a two-time national champion, X Games gold medalist, what? Justin Polson coming out of retirement, probably one of the best bike handlers I've ever seen. David Sweet, who's on a lot of form and also did this race last year. But Ride Bikes is bringing the heat. We've got Kyle Cooper, who is your Masters state champion, Rex, who is your Cat One state champion, Aiden, who is just on fire right now, this handsome fellow, Sam, who's a cyclocross genius, and then me, who probably on paper, I'm not gonna do very well. All right, so look, this is a long video because we're breaking down two different events, two motos, uh, but there's a lot of excitement in it and I have a lot to say. Uh, I'm gonna flex a ton because this is once that I didn't suck. One, look at my heart rate, 141 beats per minute on the start line, we haven't even started. Two, I'm track starting. I started clipped in because starts matter and this is not USA Cycling sanctioned, so who's gonna DQ me? Nobody. So we start flying. 800 watts off the start, you're rolling into turn one. There's about 26 guys in the open men's and this turn one is wildly tight. Some of them are banked. Uh, the pavement's really good. Right here though, I almost crash. You can see like a little Euro. Um, it was a little bit greasy right there and under power, I actually think I clipped my pedal, which I usually never do. Um, but anyways, you roll into the dirt section, super nice berm right here. You could hit that thing going 28, like no joke, if you wanted to. A uh, little jump right there. This berm though, was like it, it tightened in at the end. Uh, so it was really technical. Then it's super bumpy and then you hit this little jump and that's the dirt section. So now you're gonna get back onto the road, have these little switchbacks. You run over the curb here um, onto this bit where you pick up your most speed, right? This is as roady as it gets. And the thing about this course is that under acceleration, there's not a whole lot of draft uh, benefit, right? So pretty much for about 10 seconds right here, and maybe 10 seconds on this next straight, draft matters. Other than that, you're never side by side, you're never in a group, you're always single file. You can see that the guy on the very back of the group is so far back at the moment. And given that everything is single file, passing opportunities are very rare. It's very hard to make up any time. So then we flip into this section, which is a flat turn, uh, and guys are punching it out of this. And so is man, you had to be really cognitive of your tires. Come in here, Mike Spikes dude like almost puts me in the barriers. Um, all good, Rubbin's racing. I, I love this kind of shit. We've got Sam right in front of us. Um, he's a really accomplished cyclocross racer and uh, 
Justin Polson, you know, he's coming out of retirement, basically. The guy knows how to ride his bike. And here's what was crazy is that this seems like on paper a sprinter's paradise, right? That if you're a sprinter type, that this would be all about you because the amount of surges and snaps out of every turn. And I think that like maybe even for cyclocross guys, you know, having this dirt section really suits them. But what was so amazing about this event for me is that it took everything that I'm kind of good at and put it into one specific event. So I I can't out crit Justin Williams or anybody really. Like I, I'll be top 20 in a crit, okay, whatever. Uh, I'll be top 20 in like a mountain bike race. I'll be top 20 in a gravel race. I'll Like I'm kind of front third of everything, but this combines all of it. Like long endurance, because you have to recover between two motos, right? Um, you've got to be able to handle your bike. You got to know your skills. You got to be good in the dirt. Look, Rex on the front drilling it. We brought a lot of guys. Uh, our, our team was was pretty stacked here. But I was having the time of my life. Now, I'm on 28s. Uh, so no, I mean, this is full on road setup. But I was really comfortable in these dirt sections. I actually won uh, a motocross race earlier in the year uh, in, in January. It's something that I really enjoy doing. I do a lot of it. I ride dirt bikes a ton. I race dirt bikes. Um, and so this whole format, the fact that you're racing your bike the whole time. And racing your bike or racing my bike makes me extremely happy. So I pull up next to Kyle and I, I'm just feeling the love. I love you, man. And Rex is off the front. Rex is really flying right now. Um, and we've got these really sick drone shots that are kind of showing, you know, how the whole thing is 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 just blowing apart. I mean, the field is absolutely disintegrating. Uh, I kind of tried to open up a gap so that Aiden and Rex could go and sort of put the pressure on Justin and Phil because those are the two main guys. Right in front of me is David Sweet. He raced this last year. Uh, also, is coming off some uh, a second place at a uh, prestigious gravel event. But look at this, man. This is freaking racing. This is what it's about. And I, look, some most road races are wildly boring because it's just like sit in and do nothing and blah blah blah. And then maybe you race a little bit towards the end of the day. Uh, crit racing. Depending on who shows up, like if it's if it's Legion shows up, dude, you're just doing 30 miles an hour the entire time. There's really no racing going on. Uh, you're just blowing your butthole out the whole time. And so here I'm trying to snap these guys off uh, the back because it's just it's it's disintegrating. And so you know, like in a moment like this where you're matching one to one, right? Guys are not really getting any draft. Bike handling skills matter. You know, you putting down some power actually puts guys in a bad situation um, where you can really actually make some separation. A lot of other races I do, getting separation, having a moment where I can do something that hurts other people, that shit's so rare. But here, I'm, dude, I'm blazing these berms. Like, no big deal. I'm freaking smiling from ear to ear. I love it. Now, we definitely actually employed some team tactics. Uh, Aiden is drilling it, trying to bring back Phil. Same thing with Rex right here. I'm on his wheel. Um, I was actually really surprised at how high level a lot of these racers were that were racing here that weren't comfortable being right on someone's wheel uh, or weren't comfortable going through some of these turns. Now, I'm just smashing to try to get up to Aiden, right? And to get up to Phil because Phil's about to ride away and not because I can't follow him. I honestly feel like, dude, I can I can battle with Phil. I never am confident like that. I never have confidence. I never feel like I belong at the front of a pack. But bro, I'm so freaking fit right now and I want this year to be different. And look, I'm overhyped. Okay, just straight up. When when I go to an event, the social hype around me is always so much. And then it causes all this pressure on me. And it's like, dude, don't look at me. Don't hype me up. What am I going to do? Make it vegan excuses? I'm never going to do well. So when there's all this hype around me and I suck, 
dude, I lose sleep with that, you know? And so on this event, I don't, dude, something, something clicked, something changed. And I didn't look at it as like, oh man, there's, you know, I don't really belong here. Like I'm just like nervous. And I went into it with this F you mentality. Like, dude, I'm going to do well. Uh, I'm confident. And so the whole vibe of this for me was different. And I maybe this is how other people feel racing bikes. Like they're happy all the time, you know, like that they're stoked on how the race goes. Because often I'm not stoked how races go because I always have to make some dumb excuse. Well, my bottles flew out or this happened. Blah, 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 blah. There's no excuses here, man. The longer the race went on and the better I was doing. I mean, I was like never not top five and comfortable. Uh, I gained more and more confidence. Now, whatever this looks like, let me tell you, it's hard. The first 10 minutes, I averaged 186 beats per minute. Averaged 186 beats per minute for the first 10 minutes. That's crazy. Now, also right here, the little gap open up, but this turn, look at me just close down on these guys. I was feeling... Like I said, as the race kept going on, I got more and more comfortable with my tires and the course and how to take the lines. Most of my experiences with racing is always guys blasting by me. And I'm like, I don't even understand how this is possible. And I'm, I, I just don't really feel like I'm made of the same material as them. But here, uh, that was different. It, it was different because, look... Justin Williams, Corey Williams, they have found what they're really, really good at. Those boys and their team can ride a crit like nobody's business. They are probably the best in the entire world at doing that, or at least definitely in the United States. Okay, let's put Justin and Corey in unbound XL, right? They're not going to do well. That's not the, They wouldn't even consider it to do a 350-mile gravel ride, self-supported, right? Okay, so they found their thing and they stick to it. Now I do everything. And I know this is gonna come off as a flex, but let me flex for a second, I never get to flex, is that the weekend before this, this was Saturday, the Saturday before it, I just came off a 35 hour gravel ride, nonstop through the night, 300 and something miles. So, and then the, the, the weekend before that, I got second in uh, in a crit in Merced. You know what I mean? So like, I, I'm doing all these things, and, and I because I just love riding my bike. I love racing my bike. I don't care what it is. Let's just do it all, right? Now I'm trying in this moment to bring back Phil, because I feel like if I can get to Phil, I actually have a chance at winning this thing. I'm gonna punt him over a berm, but I'm gonna go straight up Vince Freezy on this guy. But uh, Phil knows how to ride. He's drilling off the front. Um, it's really difficult. I'm trying my hardest. I'm just emptying the tank to try to bring him back because here's the crazy thing about this event. Why I love it so much is that, dude, I can be on the front and it not be a stupid move because it's so hard for guys to come around. So basically, if you can get into this turn right here on the last lap, you, no one's coming around you. It's gonna be very difficult. So I can burn these matches um, because of how the race plays out. But anyway, back to what I was saying about Legion and Justin and those guys is that they found their niche. This to me, this type of racing is my niche. And it doesn't exist. This isn't a thing. This is the second time they've done this. So if there was a series of crit crosses across the nation, maybe I wouldn't suck so bad at everything I do. Because I would stick to this thing that I'm good at. Anyways, more on that later. Last lap. Last lap action. Phil, I was 100% Phil was going to come back. Because we had a group. We had Sam, Rex, Aiden all chasing. David Sweet chasing. Now David blows up the inside of me here. Okay. Uh, we're on the last lap. And now I'm sitting fifth wheel. And again, two moto format. So getting... If I get third in this first one or fourth in this first one, that matters, right? It matters my positioning here. But essentially, like I said, it's so very hard to come around anyone. And you could see David Sweet, who knows how this thing races. He jumps all those guys. 
This dude right in front of us clips a pedal, boom, goes down. And look, I probably wasn't going to catch David anyway uh, on this one. Now there's a huge gap. Like there's no way I'm going to close this stuff down in this last little bit. So it is what it is. But I'm going to take third because that's as good as a win essentially if I can go first in this next one and uh, Phil goes third. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Dang it, dude. Sweet. Sweet passed me on the road and I was like, I knew where I was going to get him, get him back and that guy crashed right in front of me and that opened the gap. All good. One more moto. Ow. Now with the two moto format, you were actually able to hang out in between races. So I hung out with the Bros Ride Bikes kids, which raced in my race with me, tried to steal this little kid, uh, took some photos with them. The whole environment was so amazing in between the races. I hung out with my boy. He actually raced um, solid kids group. You know, there were six to 11 and then uh, 12 to 16, I believe. So my boy had a ton of fun, you know, coming from that he loves motos. Uh, that's what he did. He was stoked on it. My daughter, so freaking cute, dude. She was so into it. Uh, Stasic had actually brought out some, some bikes. And so she was, you know, she loves doing the Strider stuff, but this has like a motor on it. She wasn't totally into the motor. She kind of liked just to pedal with her feet, but either way, you know, it was a good time. Justin hopping my, my grizzle around. And now we're going to jump right back into Moto2. Same thing. I'm track starting because no one's gonna DQ me. And the, I love the rules here that are, they're, they're loosey goosey. Okay, let's just, let's just play bikes. Now, a lot of guys were toast from that first 20 minute moto. So now, again, your boy has got an advantage, which I recover like Wolverine. Everyone talks shit on, on vegans uh, and, and you know that I'm not strong and I need to eat meat and yada, whatever. But dude, I just did a 35 hour, 300 plus mile ride the week before this. Uh, I just put in a 20 hour training week right after that coming into this. Um, I can race my bike all I want and I just recover instantly. So I, I actually rode stronger in the second moto than I did the first moto. Now, Sam, cyclocross legend, this guy is absolutely trying to tear it apart. But the big difference between Moto 1 and Moto 2 is the wind. We had a gnarly, gnarly headwind. So right here, you're doing close to 1,000 watts. And even though, yeah, like the draft isn't a big deal when you're accelerating, you can see these guys kind of just sitting on. There was some draft to it because you couldn't snap away from them because of that headwind. And so what it did is it changed the whole dynamic of Moto 2. So again, dude, racing, I love it. I love racing bikes. Road races, crits, gravel races, sometimes they're just riding your bike. They're not racing your bike or the racing aspect is a very small part of the day. Every freaking second of this event was racing your bike because of how the course was, right? Uh, and so, you know, with again, this headwind, you just, you couldn't get away from anyone. So now that two moto format, comes into play. Now we're getting, now it's getting a little exciting because Phil Tisman, if he goes, he won the first one, but dude, we've got like 10 guys on our wheel. So if he gets fifth and I get second, I could win the overall. So I just literally start uncorking it, bro. I mean, I just liquidated my soul to try to make something happen. And I was feeling so good and so confident that I didn't care if anyone was on my wheel. Dude, I was gonna rip legs off and and take their soul from their body. But the, I mean, they were just glued to my wheel. And, I, you know, maybe if I had a better snap, maybe that's something I could do. But again, you can see the flags bustling. I mean, just the wind of blowing. And in this section, I actually had this really good line uh, that I had kind of picked up um, where I was able to, kind of swoop through you can't really see it but anyways you know i am drilling it i'm trying to go as hard as i can i'm sprinting away from these guys and i want to know that i can leave it all on the line right 
again, I'm overhyped. I came into this event where Crit Cross basically put me as like the face of the event. The announcers calling my name all the time. People are wanting to take pictures. That makes me feel like a POS when I don't don't live up to any of that hype. And maybe that's unjustified or whatever. I'm just venting a little bit. Is that I feel like sometimes um, I feel stupid. I feel stupid that I get all this attention and then I get beat by guys that get no attention, right? And and they, they have less support. And it's like, man, I don't deserve this. That's just how I feel sometimes. And I want this year to be different. And I've really put a lot of time into my fitness uh, and my training and, and my confidence. So you boys going for it. Because I, I honestly feel like if I can get a gap I have the power to sustain a solo breakaway. I have the skill sets to take these lines like nobody's business. But you can again see here, I mean, I'm I'm drilling it, I'm going hard. This turn was so fun, by the way, because it's like banked. You could just full gas into that turn. Um, But it just, there was just really nothing I could do. Now I kind of tell Aiden, dude, get off my wheel. Like, let me try to go. And Phil, the two time national champion, X Games gold medalist, comes right up on my wheel. Like, dude, I'm not letting you go. Because again, two moto format. So in a crit race where it's like a 90, 90 minute crit and it all comes down to this last little bit of a sprint, which I can't, I'm never going to do well there. I'm never going to be able to do 1500 watts for a sprint. It's not really that much fun. I, I, I want to have multiple chances to race and I want more of a dynamic play out. But nothing like this has ever existed before. And so again, my moto skills, my my endurance, my snap, everything that I'm sort of kind of good at is is combined to this one moment where your boy's not sucking and it feels so very good. <laughs> it feels so very good. Uh, I, I don't really know what to say. I know I'm really hyping myself up. Um, but dude, I always I always have to show you videos where I eat dick salad. And 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 this event, it wasn't the case. So now my boy Aiden, he's our teammate. He's actually a cat three. I think he just got his cat two upgrade. Um this kid rode his heart out. Now we did have Kyle and Rex um in the race as well with us. Uh Rex crashed in Moto One. Um, and so he wasn't really vibing with uh, Moto2. Sam was running, and we'll I'll talk about this for a second. Sam ran like gravel tires. And he, I think he was running 32s. Now, this is the thing. If you rode gravel wheels, you were not competitive at all because of how fast these sprints were and how fast the road was. Um, and so a full-on road setup, 28s, was absolutely the way to go. You just have to have good bike handling skills. Aiden, now even though he wasn't super good in the dirt, he was so good on the road that he kind of made up for that. Um, personally, I felt so very comfortable in the dirt and I wanted to like bump bars. I wanted to take someone out. I wanted to come up the inside and just punt someone over the berm. I thought that would be super fun. Um, I don't know how people would take that, but in motocross, which is where my heart exists. I love motocross. I actually really love supercross. That's a thing. You know what I mean? Is that the vibe around riding motos is you're bumping bars, you're smashing into guys. No matter if you sucked in the race and you got last, you had fun riding the course, right? You had fun riding the course. And so in a regular parking lot crit where it's four left turns and that's it, you didn't really have fun riding that course, right? I mean, the race can make it fun, but let's just say you rode it by yourself, not very fun. You ride this course by yourself, you're still having a good time. And then you can learn a little bit, then you go into, you know, you you, you hang out in the pits with the crew, you have a good time, vibes are up, then you go do it again. And it's just this whole environment that, that produces smiles for miles. Now, uh, David Sweet, he is drilling it, trying to get away. Uh, we had kind of had this agreement like, hey, let's try to tag team Phil Tisman. And, you know, 
uh, I won't chase or you won't chase. Like, we'll do something. But it just wasn't working out. Uh, guys, guys were glued to our wheels. I kind of give it one more, you know, full basket of berries because, again, it would be so easy for someone to just lose my wheel and then and then it's so hard to make it up even as a group because you can only be single file um and so i i gave it my all i really really did i also want to give a shout out to uh eli and jack from bros ride bikes those kids are so freaking beasts man and they entered the open pro men right or just open men um and and in the first moto eli I think it was like two laps and he was with the front group. That's insane. Uh, those kids are awesome. And so, you know, I just wanted to highlight that. Now, the fact that I am trying to ride away from a two-time national champion X Games. Oh, here's Eli right there. I mean, dude, we're almost at the end and he's getting lapped with like, I don't know, five minutes left to go. Like he did so freaking good. Justin Paulson throwing down some speed wheelies. That was a fast wheelie. Uh, you know, he was one of the favorites to win this thing because of his sprint ability and his uh, his bike handling skills. But like I've been saying this whole time, this event, this track, this format, uh, it takes everything. You have to be good at everything. You need that base endurance, that long range fitness, uh, that ability to recover in between two motos can't just have you know high-end sprint for you know a couple minutes and that's it so sam you know our communication was so good i told sam like dude go to the front absolutely try to shred it because i got third in that first moto you can see this whole group of guys it would be so easy for me to make one small mistake and get caught behind this train and go 310 for a 13 point finish right and that's terrible also though is that uh phil tisman does that and he goes one seven which isn't like outrageous to think that that could happen with one small mistake then you boys on the top step of the podium raking in the dough now david sweet flying uh and at this point i really sort of get the vibe we're not gonna overtake phil this guy's too good. He just he won he won everything he entered. He did the Masters, won both those, um, won the first moto here. But I don't care, no excuses. I'm sending it, dude. I'm sending it. I am going to liquidate my soul for victory, and I'm gonna give it everything I have uh, because I'm I'm feeling too good to not absolutely walk away with this, knowing that I tried my absolute best see boys going hard but from the drone shot you can see it's just not doing anything because of the headwind is so rough now that's not an excuse i loved it i love when there's something that adds a new dynamic to racing if it is a no wind flat road race that's boring dude that is so boring. There's nothing going on. Let's get some crosswinds. Let's get rain. Let's get technical descents. Let's get something that starts to separate the guys who just have a huge engine and the guys who have other things that are going for them, like me, where I've got all these little things that I'm kind of good at, but never an ability to put them all together. So now we roll into the last lap. The most exciting lap of racing that I have ever done. Dig deep. Full gas. So Aiden just goes to the front, keeping it as fast as possible, trying to allow for Sweet to not come around me. You know, if we can just line it out, it's always lined out. It's always single file. But you know what I mean. Uh, we need to keep this as hard as it possibly can. Aiden got fourth in the first moto. And so, you know, he's still kind of looking at his own results a little bit. But I have a chance to get second or even first. So Aiden, wildly impressive. But Phil Tisman just lights it up, right? And that was, you kind of knew. Going into this turn right here, if you can lead it into this, man, it's going to be hard. 
And then David Sweet makes this move on me. I wasn't expecting it. And it's like, dude, this stinks, man. Um, but I think I can get him going into the dirt. I'm really confident with the pace that I have going into the dirt. And so I'm watching and I see my shot. I make my move. I come up the inside of David and just absolutely slam into his front wheel. Like, don't. And then I, I'm just going as hard as I can. You know, Aiden's screaming. And I've got one more turn. There's no way I'm catching Phil, but who cares? And I rail this turn and don't. There's David, like, trying to take me out. And, he, I mean, he could have punted me up that berm. And then we're sprinting it. And I come across the line second, man. Yes! You! Yeah, boy. That was fucking awesome. I fully expected you to punt me, dude. Uh, so, thanks for leaving me a little room. You're welcome. Like, I didn't want to take you out. I was going to go for it, but it's not worth crashing. So, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to my teammates, uh, Aiden and Sam and Kyle and Rex. A huge thanks to David Sweet for racing me clean. A uh, huge thanks to Phil Tisman, who absolutely kept it rolling. Um, you know, just... Thanks for the event, for putting this on. Thank you for watching this thing. I really hope this becomes something because I might actually be good at this. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, Vegan Cyclist. You. Yeah. The last lap, final dirt section, I sent it up the inside, and then I was like, I got it. And then I turned to the finish line, and then I see him coming head on to me. And I'm like, no! And then like, I went over the berm, and. I mean, I was smiling from ear to ear. I didn't suck for once. Wow!